Okay, good morning and uh, welcome everyone. Yeah, sure. So let's just pray and then we uh, continue with chapter 16 of uh, the book of Acts. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, your word. And uh, Lord, especially, Lord, the, the life of Apostle Paul and the way, oh God, um, we see the work of the Holy Spirit leading and guiding him and the team. Uh, and Lord, uh, we pray as we, as we study through and discuss that, Lord, you will help us learn lessons and uh, gain insights, Father God, for our own walk and our journey with you, Lord, and uh, strengthen us, Lord, in the work of your ministry. Lord, we speak blessings upon every single student, uh, faculty, and uh, Lord, uh, uh, Lord, their families. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so in Act 16, we started with the second missionary journey and we said that uh, this time around he Paul when he travels with Silas he picks up Timothy Timothy where does he pick up Timothy Lystra right and he does something for Timothy which is to right so circumcision circumcision of Timothy uh, reason is his mother is Jewish and father is Greek. Okay, great. Now, Timothy joins along. He goes on and uh, Paul wants to enter the region of Asia, Bithynia, but Holy Spirit does not permit him. He's forbidden by the Holy Spirit. And then what happens? Macedonia. Right. So there is a, he has a vision. And in that vision, there is a man from Macedonia. He says, come, uh, come over and help us. So they they understand that God is leading them by a vision and Paul goes. So once they go there, they come to a prominent city known as? Prominent city in Macedonia. Correct, Philippi. And in that place, they have a, a like you could say, somebody who gives their life to Christ, uh, which is Lydia. Lydia, she is an influential woman. She is a, a seller of purple. Okay, and through her, the the church kind of starts to thrive in the city of Philippi. That much we studied. Now let's continue from there. Uh, we also said that when Paul and um, Silas continued the ministry, they saw a girl, a slave girl who had the spirit of divination, who was doing fortune telling. Uh, and this girl, she starts saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation, verse 17. So Paul gets very frustrated with her. Why do you think Paul got frustrated? She's saying something good. It's good, no? She was Okay, so one uh, point is that she was giving them a lot of honor. And we've seen earlier in the book of Acts, whenever the people were given too much of honor, like people were put on a pedestal, um, they say, no, you should worship God, you should honor God, Don't. why do you look at us? We are just men like you. So that is, is one reason. Another reason, why, why is it that Paul is against this kind of, uh, I mean, it's publicity. It's good publicity. So wrong spirit so this is a big lesson for us uh, beyond what is being said we need discernment to know the spirit like what is the spirit behind it is it a spirit that glorifies god is it the holy spirit because the spirit that glorifies god is holy spirit so when each of us do ministry uh, we serve the lord all the believers it has to be through the holy spirit because god Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to glorify him. But any other spirit is not for the glory of Jesus. So even though it sounds nice, oh, listen to these men, they are the servants of the Most High, it sounds very nice, but spirit is wrong. So this is again, you know, like a thought for us that we need to discern when uh, we are serving God, 
whatever we listen to it's not necessarily it may sound right but it's not necessarily from the right spirit so that is the sensitivity with which paul served so the moment he he you know this this lady was not listening she was annoying them he was like okay this is it uh, enough is enough and he commands right how does he command the spirit to come out authority of the name of jesus so in the, he says in the name of jesus uh, i command you to come out so basically just the way jesus cast out demon spirits paul is casting out you remember jesus said when the holy spirit has come upon you you shall do greater things so now the disciples of jesus the apostles are doing greater things in the name of jesus so they cast out the spirit and it's amazing because it says he came out that very hour meaning it it did not take very long for the the power of god to work very soon this girl was delivered but for this good work there was no appreciation from the people of the city uh, do you recall any other time when they the apostles did some good work but instead of being appreciated they were accused condemned peter and john when the man who was lame for 40 years he started to leap jump walk um they said who gives you authority in what name are you doing these things right and they are in prison so there is persecution that followed back then and it's a similar story here again right um and uh, therefore uh you know paul and silas they find themselves in a difficult place now we can also ask the question where were who are the other two people with uh, paul and silas timothy and luke right timothy and luke are also there in philippi but where are they we don't know we don't have specifics so they were all doing ministry they must have gone somewhere else to do you know ministry there or they might have been in lydia's house uh, but anyway that's besides the point right now paul and silas are caught they are caught and there are condemn uh, there are accusations made against them and this is what they say okay so they are brought to the magistrates magistrates means some high authority of that city they are brought there and they are accusing stating these men being jews exceedingly trouble our city and they are teaching customs which are not lawful for us being romans to receive or observe so uh, it's as if these people are disruptors okay, that's one this is what happens is that ab chahiye band karna aur yes aaiye minute kholne ke baad band kar Is that a question? Oh, oh, okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I just muted it. Let's go back. So they are beaten with rods, and it says that they are put in the inner prison. So inner prison is a picture of high security. High security is for those who are criminals. did this happen to anyone else was anyone else put under very high security peter acts 12 right he was put inside and they had put uh, uh, many people to guard him now same kind of treatment is happening in philippi to paul and silas so in this situation what is the response of paul and silas i know last uh, class i went through it very quickly but these are all important parts that's why i just came back to it in a situation like this right what would be our reaction see we wanted to go to asia holy spirit said go to macedonia we went why god told us to go we went then we went we did the ministry because scripture says right that in my name you will cast out demons we did it what is the result we find ourselves in the inner prison so what could be the thoughts that we may go through 
in such a situation. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, more, more like you know, like uh, like a grumbling kind of conversation with God. Yeah, why is this happening when God is leading us? You know, we could be we could be just overcome by that feeling that God, I'm serving you. Why should I go through this? They were beaten with rods, it says. So think about the situation. It's not just emotional or mental, um, like that processing. More than that, physically also, they are down. They are in pain. So the normal response of uh, you know anyone in this situation could be that they are wondering how this can happen when we are following the Lord. Now, look at verse 25. Okay, It's one of the most amazing testimonies uh, of a child of God. It says, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing, to, singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Can you imagine? We, we were saying that our mindset will be one of questioning, grumbling, wondering. But Paul and Silas, it's midnight, it's late. By now they should have been exhausted and slept. But they didn't sleep. In the pain, in the persecution, in the difficulty, what are they doing? Praying. Singing hymns. Okay, singing hymns is okay. You know, you sing a tune or two. But they're singing loudly. All the other prisoners are able to hear them. It really speaks something about the attitude of Paul and Silas. It really speaks something about the uh, assurance that Paul and Silas had in God. It, it really speaks something about their devotion to God, about their worship of God. You know, the, the, the passion with which they did ministry. Because their strength came from God. And even putting in the jail or beating did not change that. Their heart is in the same place of worship. So that is the beauty of what is going on in this passage. And, uh, you know, this term there, but at midnight. So uh, uh, it's not the right interpretation hermeneutically uh, for us to use this midnight, you know, as, as a, uh, you know, like a, like a metaphor. But we could say it that at midnight, what is midnight? For in our situations, midnight is when answer has now not come. It's been so long. Midnight is when we are struggling so much. Midnight is, you know, our uh, time of pain, our time of confusion. We can just call that as midnight, right? There's no answers. But in the midnight, the testimony of Paul and Silas is they are worshipping God. So in our midnight, what are we doing? It's a big question. In the midnight hour. Yeah, so uh, we, we have so much to learn from the way these people lived their lives unto the Lord and the way they worship God. It was very deep. So they, they are worshiping God in their pain and the persecution. Now, the next part. So when one carries this kind of a passion and, uh, you know, like honor unto the Lord, Verse 26 says, suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. This is the result of praise. Uh, if we you know, go to passages like, I think Psalm 149, is it about praise? Psalm 149. No, where it says that uh, we, we sing unto the Lord we praise him and that, you know, our praises are a weapon. I think Psalm 8 also has a, a passage there that talks about how praise is a weapon. Praise is spiritual warfare. Now, maybe Paul and uh, Silas understood that, that if we praise God in a contrary circumstance, it will work in our favor. And that's exactly what happened. So there was an earthquake. What did it do? It shook the foundations of the entire prison 
and their praise did not just set them free see our praise what does it do for us it sets us free but their praise in verse 26 last part it says all the doors were opened everyone's chains were loosed that's the power of praise it brings deliverance in our lives it also brings deliverance in the lives of people around us and praise is so powerful okay so that is what we can learn from them and you know when something like this happens the prisoners and that too they are in the they are in high security in a prison uh the person who's put in charge the jailer has a great responsibility he should never let the prisoners escape but now after the earthquake the jailer got scared he thought that oh everyone's going to run away and tomorrow when i am interrogated i'm going to be killed so what did he try to do he tried to kill himself because he thought that's a better thing that i i just die right now so he's trying to kill himself but call immediate paul calls to him and uh, you know he says do, uh, do no harm to yourself we are all here again it says something about their attitude if you and i were there bhago <laughs> like you know you just run <laughs> everything we are free now it's time to just get out of this place but paul is confident and he says no nobody is going to escape don't worry to the jailer now what was the result of this kind of an attitude why did he do that maybe he had a sense from the holy spirit which told him that in this situation the jailer will come to know christ so you need to minister to the jailer so because of that he did not escape and we see the next part there where um you know the jailer came and he fell down before paul and silas and uh, jailer is asking sirs what must i do to be saved can you imagine that is so dramatic they didn't even like preach looks like in what luke is writing only the miracle happened and the jailer understood that the power of god is real so he asked them how shall i be saved and then they preach they say believe on the lord jesus christ and you will be saved you and your household and then what happens uh, you know they share the the gospel with them and uh, he got saved right along with it says his household he and his household got saved and they were also baptized what a beautiful testimony going from being in the prison to now sharing the gospel with the jailer and his family and everyone getting saved and being baptized in god so that is what happened in philippi so the next day so right now they have not left the prisons they are still there so the next day maybe the news would have gone to the higher authorities that all these things have taken place so what they did is they just passed an order they said okay let these men go but at that point you know paul uh he gets a little upset because what did we say about philippi it's a roman it's it's kind of a lot of roman people uh, it has those rules and some of those veterans are living there so in such a city paul's expectation was that they will follow the rules what were the rules if someone was accused of a particular issue then they must be given a fair chance of trial but what did the authorities do they quietly uh, drag them beat them up put them in the jail there is no process so he himself being a roman citizen feels upset that why are they doing this to us like they are not honoring the law so that's why um, in verse 37 he says they have beaten us openly uncondemned romans and have thrown us into prison and now they put us out secretly no indeed let them come themselves and get us out so he says no we are not going to leave because you never followed the proper process so ask the magistrates to come 
so anyway they kind of you know they come and they plead with paul and they resolve the matter and after that paul and silas agree they come out of the prison and where do they go is there any place to go in philippi now usually where would they go in jerusalem if let's say they come out of the prison so it's almost like there was some concept of the home church or the house church in each city that they went um like here it is lydia lydia's house there are it says seen the brethren they encouraged so the church gathered uh in lydia's house so they went back to the church of philippi which was gathered in lydia's house right so with that we've come to the end of acts chapter 16 so if there are any questions we can talk about it uh before we proceed to acts chapter 17 here yes any um anything that maybe touched you or spoke to you from their experience in philippi you can share about it and then we will continue with 17 okay 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 <laughs> yeah no matter what's happening in our lives or thing like trust him and praise him yeah i mean really amen good. yeah yeah so to be able to learn that and to follow it i think is the hard part we know even david says right i will bless the lord at all times but david also went through so many problems difficulties defeat uh people coming against him uh it's amazing how he could praise the lord like psalm 27 also he says all the nations have gathered like everyone has gathered against me and yet you know he says i cut them all off in the name of the lord he's he's keeping himself in that position of worship at all times all times um and yeah if we can learn that it's very powerful so yes any other thoughts uh, like i was so uh, like i was i can say i was like very awestruck because mm. uh, we know like when they were in prison like one thing i was really wondering is like when the when they were paul and silas were praising and the walls broke yes. prison doors open yeah and when the soldier was about to die himself what they said is like we are here it means like other jailers also even they did not went we can understand if paul and silas stayed there because they let it but other people also they stayed it because they felt the presence of god so much maybe or they were convicted that they yeah. want to go yes and yes. they should be very criminal minded criminals also but still they did not wanted to go run away but they stayed and one thing i was learning from this is like most of the times we think like it's hard for us to reach them how we will preach make them convince yes, yeah i think it's best to just make them experience the presence of god through our lifestyle and that itself change their hearts true uh, true and in all places because usually we see the ministry is in the synagogue in the marketplace but here it is in the jail <laughs> so wherever god i loves us we do the ministry for god so uh did i mention it to you your class or some other class that uh, one particular person richard wormbrand uh, okay so th- uh, there's a person who underwent lot of uh, persecution in the nation of uh, romania back in those days and he wrote a book it's called god's underground and it's about um, all the persecution that he went through as a believer so but the good thing is as soon as he became a believer he loved god's word so much that he memorized it okay 
uh, it's amazing. He memorized scripture. So he knew many, many, many uh, sections of scripture. Then what happened in that country is those who were believing in Christ, they put them in the prisons. So he found himself in the prison with no Bible. And uh, he had the verses in his mind. So wherever he was, whatever he was going through, and then he describes all the painful, uh, you know, like experiences that he went through in the prison. But he never got discouraged because the word was running in his mind. And in one particular place, he explains, they put him in a cell um, and uh, he was feeling like, I need to share the gospel. Can you imagine? He's in the prison. How can he share the gospel? He's in one cell and there are other prisoners in other cells. So he tries something. You know what that is? Uh, those days, you uh, we had Morse code. You know, you tap to communicate. You just do some tapping. So he knew that language. So the scriptures that he knows and the gospel, he, he, uh, he worked out like in Morse code. And in the cell, in his weakness, he's just tapping out the Morse code for somebody to hear the gospel. Can you imagine the passion that these people had? And then he even got response from another cell saying, yeah, I'm hearing you. Okay. But like when you listen to what, what um, the life of God in us does to us, you know, what a transformation, isn't it? And this particular person, Richard Wormbrandt, he also describes how he was when he was not in Christ. He was a young person partying hard and, you know, living a very worldly life. But once he got born again, he became so passionate for Christ that nothing could stop him. Not even, not even the mistreatment of the jail authorities. And he survived his time in the jail and he came out uh, to talk about what happened to him. So, I mean, this is just one story, but I'm sure there are many, many, many stories of people who have endured hard times, but the life of God in them was so real. You know, So it always reminds me, whenever I read this, Paul and Silas, I remember about this man and uh, how committed he was. So yeah, it's challenging for us, uh, but we can, I'm sure we can. It's called In God's Underground. Yeah, I can check it out. All right, let's move on. We'll come to Acts uh, 17. So in Acts 17, there are two more spots uh, or cities where Paul and Silas will go, um, and we are going to talk about them. All right, so let's quickly look at the map once again so that we don't lose track. I'm going to show you. Yes, so those viewing online can uh, look at the picture. Okay, so we we are quite clear from Troas, Neapolis, stop by Philippi, and everything that we spoke of right now happened in Philippi. Now there'll be like a stopover in Amphipolis and Apollonia. We don't read too much about these places. You know what kind of ministry they did, but obviously we know that they would have done the ministry but Luke is uh, only kind of give, putting the highlight on where a lot of ministry took place uh, so now we will study about two other places which are quite prominent one is Thessalonica we know that Paul wrote uh, uh, an epistle right two epistles to the Thessalonians uh, and also Beria so these two places we will talk about now, Thessalonica and Beria. Okay, and then he will move on. So this, this whole section here is Macedonia. Okay, it, it uh, has these places. Now after Thessalonica, he will go to Athens and uh, he will go to, later on, go to this region called Achaia, uh, which has another prominent place called as 
Corinth. So we'll come to all this, but today let's focus on Thessalonica and Beria. So from Philippi, now where do they go? They go to Thessalonica. And in Thessalonica, their uh, ministry is to the Jews, the standard practice of going to the synagogues. They go there and they start to preach. Okay, And uh, it also says in verse 3, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ has to suffer and rise again from the dead and saying, this Jesus whom I preach to you is the Christ. So here there's apart from preaching, generally how do we, how does preaching work? We proclaim, we declare, but there is the element of explaining and demonstrating. So what do we understand? See, there are times when people are seeking earnestly where we have to clarify for them. We can't just say, Jesus is the Christ, believe it, that's it. There is a need to explain. So Paul is doing that. So he was explaining to them. He was demonstrating. How do you think he would have explained and demonstrated from the scriptures? See, scriptures say like this, the prophecies speak like this, and this is how Jesus lived. Both of it connects. And that's why I'm saying that Jesus is Lord. So in this way, he is explaining and demonstrating. And uh, the good thing is some of them believed. So in Thessalonica, he had uh, people who believed. There were a multitude of devout Greeks, women who followed Paul and Silas. So there is a church emerging there. Okay. Now this church, you remember we said in each city, they go and they have um, uh, a gathering. And usually there's somebody's house where they meet. Okay. So in Thessalonica, in Philippi, it was Lydia's house. In Thessalonica, it is the house of a man called Jason. So in Jason's house, they used to meet. Now, when this good ministry was going on in Thessalonica, similar to other places like Antioch, where opposition started, opposition also started in Thessalonica, unfortunately. Um, those who heard Paul and Silas and they were not uh, convinced by what they spoke, you know, they became envious. And what did they start to do? They gathered mo a mob and an uproar began. Now, look at what they say. Okay, You remember earlier in Philippi also they were condemned. And uh, people said that these Jewish people, they're coming, they're disrupting our customs. That was the accusation. In Thessalonica, what is the accusation? Look at verse 6, the latter part of it, the second part of it. It says, these who have turned the world upside down have come here also. Does it sound like an accusation or an appreciation? Yeah, it sounds more like an appreciation. Like these people who turned the world upside down have come here also. But the power of God was very real. And uh, the Thessalonians also heard hey, something about these guys. They went to the other cities and, uh, and notice they had only gone to a few cities. But the people are saying they turned the world upside down. So the power of God through the lives of these men, it was impacting. <coughs> impacting so powerfully that it was almost like it's impacting the world. And that is the accusation against these men. So then what happens? They find out that Jason is the man who is housing these people in um, you know, his place. And so they go, they um, drag Jason out and, uh, you know, they, once again, did they beat him and they troubled the crowd and the rulers. So they, when they had taken security from Jason and the rest, they let them go. So yeah, so they, they take a hold of Jason. They attack the house of Jason, it says. Okay, and they drag Jason. 
all right so was he beaten up i don't think there's a specific line that says he was beaten up but he was dragged meaning he was mishandled and rough rough handling was done that's good enough and they take a security from him so maybe you know he has to pay a, a fine for doing according to them unlawful activity of uh, hosting these people who have turned the world upside down and then they finally let them go so the atmosphere in thessalonica is not favorable so when the atmosphere is not favorable what do they generally do move they leave so they left thessalonica in a hurry that's what happened okay they had to quickly leave thessalonica uh, and it says verse 10 the brethren immediately sent paul and silas away by night to the next place you remember on the map what was the other place beria so they go to beria and there they are doing the ministry so what is the uh, the main thing about uh, beria or beria however you want to pronounce it uh, the main aspect of beria is the people in beria there's a description about them in verse 11 it says they were fair minded than those in thessalonica so what about these fair minded people they were people who with all readiness search the scriptures daily okay uh, and uh, they used to even test out what paul was teaching to them so now paul and silas have come to beria and they are preaching now you just think with me if paul is preaching nobody would question right because he is paul imagine like if paul comes and uh, he is giving us a session here will any of us ask clarification or questions and say are you sure paul we'll never do that we'll be like oh this is apostle paul like whatever he says we will listen but the barians are not like that for them the accuracy of the word was very important so no matter who came and preached they might be the best preacher they always went back and what does it say it says searched the scriptures verse 11 search the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so so what does it tell us when we are studying the word and maybe we are also listening you know nowadays uh, actually there is like information explosion so many sermons so many programs so many podcasts people are talking from the word of god we are listening listening is okay but are we checking whether what is being spoken is in the word or not sometimes what we do is we don't and then that leads to wrong belief and wrong understanding and wrong actions that's dangerous but what can we learn from the barians they were never careless with the word of god anything that they heard it says they searched the scriptures daily so that's that's our lesson from them so that we can also be diligent so they preached there and um, uh things were going well but the opposition continued even in beria so the people came there also and they started creating trouble for them uh, and uh, immediately what happened is the brethren thought or the believers there thought better to send paul and silas out of here because it's not looking good so uh, they sent paul away to go to the sea but both silas and timothy remained there why did they do that paul went silas and timothy were there for some time any reason yeah we could say that right because new believers are there they can't be abandoned uh, somebody has to be there to take care and guide the believers so they left um, we could say timothy and silas and paul travel to the next spot he went by sea and the next stop for paul is athens okay athens and there he was waiting to receive silas and timothy so basically he goes ahead and then uh, these people 
yeah the he was waiting for silas and timothy to join them so we will come to athens in the next class because it's a very different kind of a setup okay where you have um, it's it's like an intellectual capital of the ancient world you had many philosophers much philosophy so uh, one thing we can notice is that every city is different the needs of every city are different and the way they ministered in each city is different so especially when we come to uh, athens we will see that paul will preach in a way that these intellectual people will understand okay so uh, a little bit about uh, the city of athens is it is the capital of modern day greece and uh, you know uh, by land it would have taken about 12 days of uh, travel time uh, whereas it would have taken only 3 days by sea to reach this particular place and in athens there was the worship of the main goddess uh, of the city was uh, athena she was a greek goddess uh, and uh, the culture of this place right uh, it was inhabited for a very long time so that's why we call it like an ancient city uh, by the time you know at that time when paul went also it was already inhabited for you know thousands of years so that way it's very ancient in its culture and it had some prominent philosophers who lived in that place who who hail from uh, athens there there are people such as socrates i don't know if you you all have heard these names right socrates uh, socrates is somewhere between like 450 uh, bc so back then he he was there and then you have other philosophers names like plato uh he came a little after socrates uh and uh, there were other names like uh, demosthenes and uh, maybe we we know aristotle aristotle you heard about this person right so these were scientists philosophers um and it it is like it was an intellectual capital people would come there to study it was like a learning center even today in some parts of the world when students want to learn science or art philosophy um, they are sent to you know the best university it's over there in this particular place in the ancient times it was athens people would come to athens because it was a learning center of these crucial uh, subjects and uh, they truly enjoyed philosophies philosophies is <clears throat> you know a belief uh, about the way of life and uh, we will discuss in the next class because there are particular concepts like there's uh, stoicism epicureanism which was the popular belief at the time when paul went there uh, and um, while these beliefs were were people were taken over by these beliefs paul goes and preaches something different and how he does it what is his approach in this uh, philosophical city we will look at it in the next class okay uh, but just one thought one final thought see no matter who the people are now if we go back to um philippi or you know uh, thessalonica beria it doesn't show that those people are like this here it's full intellectual like scientists artists is the gospel like can we share the gospel with intellectual people yeah it's for everyone it's for everyone no matter how intellectual people are or if they are not that intellectual also you know you have like normal people in other places regular people the gospel is for them the gospel is for these people and you know later on we will observe that there were like lydia is very rich okay in society she has a high standing but then you will see other names people like secondus secondus itself uh, it it implies that he came from a a community which was not regarded that much but he became a believer he was also a part of god's kingdom 
so there are people who are from the intellectual class people who are from the regular class people who are rich people who are poor you know people who uh, are um, who have high fi jobs and at the same time you know the jailer got saved so people with all kinds of jobs so the gospel is for everyone and they are ministering to everyone but the way they are ministering is little bit different that part we will look at uh in the next class so right now let's just close with a word of prayer and if uh, somebody from the online batch can lead us that would be wonderful can i do pastor yes yes sister chaya please go ahead yeah Thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful learning time, O Lord. Thank you, Father, for your spirit, O Lord, Jesus, Father, which made us understand that we should always rejoice in all kinds of circumstances and whatever situation is there, help us so we can rejoice like Paul and Silas, O Lord, Jesus, Father. Help us, Father, strengthen us and lead us and guide us through today's learning so we will be able to practice in our life, O Lord. and we will be able to extend your kingdom oh lord jesus father thank you lord thank you father for pastor nancy and all the students oh lord bless each one of us lead us and guide us in jesus name i pray amen 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 thank you thank you sister chaya thank you thank everyone you. yeah god bless you we'll connect uh, on monday